All right, guys, we're just doing a quick drive here in the Toyota BZ4X limited all-wheel drive. We did our main review on the limited front-wheel drive, and I just wanted to offer some context on this all-wheel drive, see how that drives compared to the front-wheel drive car. Um, lots of information about this BZ4X. That's all on that main review. Basically, all you need to know, this is Toyota's new electric crossover. BZ stands for Beyond Zero, their new kind of nomenclature for their electric vehicles. Four is the size of this vehicle, kind of similar to the RAV4, sizing-wise. It's a little bit longer, lower, wider. X, this is an SUV, it's a crossover. Uh, this has X mode, all-wheel drive. Uh, you can select between a different bunch of different options. Deep snow, mud, snow, dirt. You can turn off VSC, which is fun. I slide this thing around a little bit. We're not really going to get a chance to test the all-wheel drive system much today other than just launching from a stoplight. So hopefully we can get this back in Michigan at a later point and give it some light off-roading, some soft roading. But for now, look at that. Acceleration, 214 horsepower from the dual motor BZ4X. this is about 228 miles of electric driving range in the limited dual motor version. Acceleration at speed feels pretty similar to the front wheel drive BZ4X, but off the line, of course, you're going to get a lot more traction, a lot more thrust, which is exciting. Overall, this is a great electric vehicle from Toyota. Really quiet on the inside, not a lot of gimmicks. Beyond the weirdness with the design on this dashboard, it's a pretty straightforward driving experience. We have an infotainment 12.3 inch touchscreen that's very similar to what we have in the Tundra. This seems like Toyota's new infotainment system. It works great, it's pretty straightforward. A lot of physical controls and buttons for all of your, uh, you know, your cruise control, your lane keep assist, your lane centering, lane tracing, eco mode, camera view, um, regenerative braking. This will slow down to about three, four miles per hour on regen. It will not come to a complete stop. It will still coast and creep. Toyota doesn't want you to become too distracted. Uh, they want you to have an active participation in coming to a complete stop, which is, which is fine. It's interesting to see vehicles take sides on regenerative braking, whether to do it all the way or not. There's an example of the black BZ4X with the black cladding. It kind of blends in pretty nicely. It's a little bit um, of a metallic gray on the fenders. And on black, it's pretty subtle. You don't really notice a whole lot there. We'll park and show you what this white BZ4X looks like in comparison. On the road, it's a pretty nice looking crossover. Not as wild, not as crazy looking as I first thought it might be. But more toned down, a little more subtle in person than uh, I anticipated. All right, so some impressions on this all-wheel drive versus the front-wheel drive BZ4X. It feels a little bit heavier, it feels a little bit more solid, a little bit weightier going down the road. But for the most part, it's a very similar driving experience. You're going to be getting a little bit more acceleration, of course, off-road performance, snow driving performance out of this dual motor. It's going to be a little bit more expensive too. This is about $48,000, $49,000, and add in a couple options. Probably pushes this over fifty grand. We can look at the spec sheet here in a minute once we park. But I like the way this drives. It's smooth, it's seamless. This is an easy electric vehicle to live with. Toyota said easy beasy. I cringed, but <laughs> there's some truth to it. <laughs> This just builds upon all of the experience that Toyota's had with electrification and their Prius over the years and all of their battery electric vehicles, hybrids in the past. This actually isn't the first fully electric crossover from Toyota. They had RAV4 elect EVs in 1997 and 2011, which is interesting, though this is the first nationally available electric vehicle from Toyota. So kind of a big deal and the beginning of the Pulp EZ lineup. Interestingly, we do not get a glove box in the BZ4X. There is a, uh, a radiant heating system that will warm your legs and, and body and only use the 12-volt battery, so it doesn't reduce range. Uh, so that's kind of neat. 
That's kind of in place of a glove box down there. Let's just walk you around this real quick too. This example in white really has a lot of contrast between the black roof and the uh, blacked out fenders. I gotta say, this is a little bit odd to look at, but eh, you, get, you get past it after the first few minutes of standing around. It says 20 inch wheels. There's a little intake here to channel air around that front tire, make this more aerodynamic. The BZ4X has 8.1 inches of ground clearance. It's actually pretty, pretty good amount of ground clearance, more than the Tesla Model Y, more than the Mustang Mach-E. It's nice to see an electric vehicle with a decent amount of ground clearance for some off-roading, some light off-roading. Of course, this is made in conjunction with Subaru. The uh, Subaru alternative is, or so the Subaru counterpart is the Solterra which I think has a better name than BZ4X, but that's okay. A lot of cargo space in the back. No spare tire, unfortunately, but you do get a charge cable that comes with a vehicle. The all-wheel drive BZ4X can charge at a maximum current DC fast charge at 100 kilowatts. Go from about zero to 80% in under an hour. A lot of back seat room. Pretty flat floor here too. There's a little bit of a hump in the center, but for the most part, this is this is flat. Your feet are raised up a little bit more than normal in the back seats, just because of that battery pack. Nice looking interior too. Steering wheel kind of reminds me of the first gen Prius or second gen Prius. We definitely Toyota's definitely taken some design elements from the Rav4, the Prius, and kind of combined it all together in this BZ4X. I think overall it's a decent looking crossover. It's definitely not boring, not, bo not dull, it's interesting. Add in any federal incentives, tax credits, pricing isn't too bad on this either. We'll see what availability is like. Any complaints on my first drive of this? Infotainment seems to take a little bit to turn on and come to life. These are pre-production vehicles today, so it seems like the wireless connectivity isn't working in them yet, but um, these do have wireless CarPlay and Android Auto from the factory as standard, which is great. This is your little wireless charger right here. Seems to work really well. Connects a lot better than the Toyota Tundra, which is always sliding off. There we go. Here's what CarPlay looks like. Nice, big, beautiful display. Nice and responsive, too. This JBL sound system is decent, also. No volume knob, unfortunately, but we do get these volume buttons. And then a pretty quick scrolling wheel on the steering wheel. Reverse 360 camera looks nice. Good visibility, too. A lot of USB ports around this BZ4X2 in pretty much every direction. Everywhere you can see a USB port, front and rear seats. I am impressed with this JBL sound system. It sounds a little bit nicer than other JBLs from Toyota, especially compared to the RAV4. A little bit clearer, a little bit better bass. All right guys, well like I said, just a quick drive in this BZ4X today. Wanted to give you guys something on the dual motor all wheel drive option. So anyway, that's gonna be it for this one. Thanks for watching, we'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Press the P button to park. There's our parking brake, power off. All very easy to use and live with. Can't wait to spend some more time with this in Michigan. All right, thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys later. Take care.